Today I want to show you some film photographs that I've recently shot. I like to bring along a film camera to all sorts of activities and events, and after a couple months I end up with quite a few photos which were not shot on camera in my behind the scenes videos, and so videos like this one are my way of sharing a few of those photos. Today's set of pictures was shot sometime between April and July and consists of some moody weather, some black and white and some colourful sunny photos, all of which I look forward to presenting this video. So I want to start off with this photograph here of my friend Jan. This is from a rainy day when I went out to shoot with him. I had a roll of Kodak Gold loaded in my Practica Super TL1000 and I believe this photo was a 35mm lens. And we had just decided to drive up a mountain and explore the area and we found a place to park and then just walked around randomly. We didn't really have a proper plan, we didn't really know where we were. And along the way I just found this field that went up, so I liked the angle that I could see looking up the field with the trees. And I asked Jan if he'd be okay to get his feet wet and walk into that field, so I sent him off about 20 meters off into the distance up onto that hill and stand there with his bright punchy orange jacket and the umbrella which I thought was a really cool combination that bag that he's got hanging over him with the jacket and the umbrella it just really made for a pleasing subject I think and so I really like the idea of placing him small inside of this environment and this is the result and I think it worked out very nicely the one thing that I'm not so happy with is the sky it's just a lot of the photo is this sky and it's just white and there's just nothing in there so I'm thinking maybe I should have gone closer to have the trees bigger and maybe shoot with an even wider lens I'm not quite sure like the trees would have to be bigger or I would have to somehow change my perspective to let those trees look bigger in comparison to him so overall I really like the composition with him being tiny in this environment I think it's a really beautiful photo that shows the environment but has that point of interest that intrigues the viewer at least it, it intrigues me i think it really pulls me into this photo and puts into perspective where jan is standing and you can like see yourself in him standing in this place then let's continue with the same day as is probably not very hard to recognize uh, these are two more portraits or sort of portraits of jan and uh, I just really like these photos as a series. So the one before and these two, they just fit together so nicely because, well, obviously the, the subject is just a continuous subject in this green environment. So let's begin with the left photo. The left photo is one of the last photos I think that I got on that day. And it was another one of those moments where I asked Jan if he'd be okay to walk into the wet field and get his not only feet, but now also lower legs pretty wet because the grass was just completely soaked and I was basically asking him to walk straight into it but he was down for it it was all right so <laughs> i asked him to walk in a couple meters and i walked back into a different field to gain some distance because i don't know if it's very visible but i was shooting with a 135 millimeter lens because i was hoping to really compress the background which i think is quite visible here but maybe not quite as noticeable because you don't know what would have been visible if I wasn't shooting with such a tight lens because it looks like there's just a wall of leaves behind him but it was just a forest with some bushes and some trees a bit like in the previous photo that I showed you so if I would have shot this with a 35 millimeter I would have probably had the same problem again with too much sky so this is one way of solving that problem I suppose but the disadvantage here of course is that you can't see the whole tree you can just see a bunch of bushes but I do really enjoy the look I have to say so overall I'm really happy with this left photo I think Jan again is just an amazing subject in this case I really like that he puts up his hood which just gives it I don't know it just adds something unique to the photo because he looks really packed as if this were like really terrible conditions even though it wasn't really it was just rain but no storm or wind and again the umbrella is just a great prop I mean, I believe umbrellas are pretty popular props, I don't know. 
Actually, in film photography, I usually see so many sunny photos that you rarely get to see an umbrella. But as you know, I like to shoot in some moody weather as well. So in this case, I think the umbrella really is a nice prop just to give your model something to, to hold. And I think here again, it just works wonderfully with the colors. You've got this entire green canvas and then he as just a, a contrasting point. I mean, it's very classic. It's almost that yellow jacket cliche thing, but I think in this case, it's just far away enough from that. It's an orange jacket and it's an umbrella. It's just a wee bit different that it's not quite as cliche as the yellow jacket cliche. But then uh, on the right side, this is actually my favorite photo. And I'm not sure if you can relate to that because I recently posted this photo and it turns out that not so many like this photo in comparison to the photos that I posted after that. I'm not sure if that is due to the photo itself or due to other reasons, but I got the feeling that maybe people don't appreciate the photo as much as I do, but I just love the composition here and how the colors came out. I think everything just worked out perfectly here. The exposure is looking spot on. We've got nice deep shadows, but we've also got enough information to actually see everything in a clean manner. And the colors just turned out beautifully. And I love the composition, how it turned out. It's actually sort of a random composition. It might almost look messy, but it doesn't feel messy to me. So I think the main components are the diagonal line from the background, from the mountain, and of course from there you've got the trees making straight lines, but then you've also got Jan in the foreground which is another straight line, but then his umbrella is another diagonal line but in a different way, it's not parallel to the background line, it's got a different angle. And the umbrella is really big and takes up a lot of space here and I think all the water drops on the umbrella give it this intriguing texture so that it doesn't make it boring. Whereas in the first photo I explained that the white of all the sky that is covering half of the, not half of the photo, but a third of the photo. Um, it's just white, so it's kind of boring. But in this case, a lot of the photo is covered by this umbrella, which has these speckles of water on it, which is just an interesting texture. So it doesn't make it boring, I suppose. I think that's why I don't find it irritating. And I just love how you can just see a bit of Jan's throat and chin. So you can see the subject and you can see it's a person and you almost feel like you connect to the subject, but still the subject is sort of anonymous because you can't see him properly. So I don't really know if you can relate to why I like this photo so much. Please let me know if you feel this photo, if you don't. But um, I just love how this one turned out and this is my favorite of the day. But I'll show you a couple more from this day. So I've got two more slides with three photos from this day. This left photo here of the wet road on a rainy day through the forest is from that day. This is that mountain road that we drove up to get to the place where we were shooting. And I believe this was on our way down. We stopped occasionally and I got out and got a couple shots of the road. And I think I got a total of three and this is my favorite. I think this one just turned out really solid. It just looks really good. We've got nice tonal ranges and the sky is overexposed, I suppose, but it gives a nice glow, I, I think. It doesn't really irritate me because it's just so small. It's fine. And then I like how the whole forest is rather dark and falls off into darkness on the edges. And I think this photo just really emits this feeling that the forest has this moody forest on a rainy day. I just think it captures that very nicely. The right photo is actually not from this day. Um, this is actually from the day when I was at the lake. I actually did a behind the scenes video, you might remember. I was shooting digitally on that day, but I had my film camera with me to finish a roll of Kodak Gold. I only had two shots or so left. And I just squeezed this photo in here because I thought it actually fits to this series so well because it was another rainy day. And this is shot from inside the car. So on the car roof, a lot of water drops had accumulated and shooting through them is always something interesting. And here I captured some trees and uh, I underexposed it a, a little bit. So there's a little more detail in the sky. Um, however, the trees are completely silhouettes now. There's no information, but I think it fits the photo. It doesn't really irritate me that they're just shapes now instead of actual trees that you can see the detail in. They're just shapes, but I think that's fine. And I just love the texture again that is added by the water drops. And then this is the last slide from the day with Jan. So these are two more photos from that trip to the mountain. The left photo is what I was just talking about. We were driving down the mountain again, but we stopped a couple times. And I just really liked how the car lights were reflecting on the wet road. I mean, that's 
why many people like to shoot in the rain I suppose because of all the reflections and of course I just had to make use of it and I also liked that he was outside of the car being a secondary subject I suppose because I think only the car by itself might have been a bit boring I know the open door was interesting but I think it just would have been a bit too boring I like that there's this added context of him again with the umbrella and so overall, I think this is a really decent photo. It's not one of my top photos from that day, but I thought it's a nice one to include because I think this has a bit more of that storytelling aspect that you can see what we were up to. And I think it's a really nice piece in this series. And then the right photo similarly is not a photo that is good as a standalone photo, I think. I think this is another photo that works as a piece of this series because it's a detail shot and I hadn't really got any proper detail shots yet. I really like the detail because I don't know in your country if you have this kind of thing, but here in Austria, it's very normal that when you're up on the mountain or somewhere where there are farmlands and cows, that on the roads, they have these these metal bars. They're thought so that cows can't walk over them because it keeps them in, but cars can just drive over. In this case, there were plants growing from beneath, coming out of the bars, which I thought looked amazing. It just has a really cool look, I think. So I wanted to get a detailed shot of it, and I think it worked out very nicely. And in combination with all the other photos, I think it makes for a really nice series. All right, so it's time for a bit of a jump in time. All of these photos are recent, but this one is far more recent than the previous ones. This was only on July 22nd, and this was actually in the midst of a film shoot. I was helping a couple friends uh, to shoot a music video, and wait, where do I start this story? Because it's actually a long story, but to put it very simply, part of the music video was to make a big fire, and so that of course means that we had to get a lot of wood, and we were buying wood off of people who were selling wood, and this was early morning at about, I don't know, 5.30ish, 6 o'clock, not quite, maybe 6 o'clock, I'm not sure, but it was our job during this moment to drive through sunset and follow this guy who would bring us into the forest where he had all his wood that we would buy off him and then take to the location where we would make that big fire. And while we were driving, I was not driving myself, I was luckily in the non-driving position so that I could get my camera out at any time if I'd see anything. And I mean it was sunrise on a beautiful day like this, it was gorgeous, and we were driving through some fields, and there was actually some fog, some morning fog, I'm not used to that in the summer, so I was of course getting very excited, and got out my Minolta Reva Zoom 70W, that's the name, <laughs> that Minolta point and shoot that I have, and I had a roll of Lomography 800s in there, that only had about three or so shots left, so I wanted to finish those shots, so that's why I had brought it along to that film shoot, and I'm so happy that I brought it, because I didn't expect to get a possibility like this here and this photograph turned out beautiful I think it's always a bit of a challenge to shoot out of a car because composing has to be done very quickly and it's often a bit messy but I think here it works out wonderfully so you can see in the foreground in all the grass and the motion blur and that we were in the midst of driving that's what I really like about shooting outside of the car. It really gives a photo this dynamic look that in the front there's stuff that is just blurred through the motion blur, uh, but then in the background everything becomes sharp. And I just love that this tree was here and that it just all worked out because this tree is clearly the subject of the photo. I think that is quite obvious. But all the background with the mist and the mountains, it just worked out wonderfully. So I'm just really happy with how this turned out and I thought it's a great addition to this series that I wanted to show you today. Then let's move on with two portraits. Portraits are probably things that you're not very used to seeing from me, but in today's series there are actually quite a few of them and here are two more. So on the left photo, that is my friend Joseph, and we went out for a little shoot, just a walk somewhere on the countryside, and I had my Practica with me again, with the 135mm again, as we saw in the previous photos of Jan, and that was still the same role of Fuji Superior Extra 400, and I wanted to get a portrait of him with that 135mm compressed look which I just really fancy. And so we were on a field and I thought that's a great possibility to try it out. And this is the result. Sadly, I slightly missed focus. But apart from that, apart from the technical stuff, I think the photograph as itself is beautiful. I think it's a very like neutral portrait of him. 
and it just documents this time of his life, I suppose. We went out to shoot and it's something that will be fun to look at in a couple of years time when you can see, oh, look, look back then when we looked so young. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just really like it. I think it just, it's such a simple portrait and I think it really works nicely. The composition is quite pleasing, I find. Just this whole body portrait with the environment around, slightly blurred in the background. It works very nicely, I think. There's not really much bad I can say about it except for my own technical errors. I think it worked out very nicely and that's why I wanted to show it to you in this series. And then on the right side is more of a casual photo that I just got some time on the side. This was actually on a rainy day sometime shortly before my next video was going to go online because I remember that I was out to shoot a thumbnail on this day and I had Melly come with me with her sister's dog. At some point Melly was doing something on the camera and I thought I really like this scene so I got out the camera and shot this photo. Overall I think the photo is a bit messy though with the background. The background is quite distracting with the flags of the background and the big sign to the left of her so it's really not a decent portrait unlike the one on the left. The right photo here is more of a just a snapshot from that moment but with the rainy photos from before I think this just fitted into the series and I think it was still a photo worth showing so here it is. Alright so let's continue with not yet good weather photos. I don't know if you actually fancy these moody photos. As you know, I quite like these moody photos. And half of the series that I'm showing you today, as you just saw at the beginning, was all rainy. And I'm going to show you some sunny good weather photos as well. But before, I have three black and white photos actually, because I also shot a roll of black and white sometime in the last couple months. And I actually got some shots that I really like. And so here are two of those. These were shots on my way to a friend actually, and I was just driving along this lake and thought oh this is actually beautiful so I want to stop somewhere and I found a spot to stop and got first the photo looking out of the car so with the wonderful subframing here of the car's window and then the lake behind but then I also got out to get a photo of the lake by itself and I think these two photos as a pair go together wonderfully. I just love this combination that I'm showing you right here like this. It was very cloudy, it was raining at times, but not quite yet, and it was a bit windy, so you could see a lot of waves. It was really not a quiet lake day, and uh, I think with the black and white, it just really adds a lot of drama to the photo, and I think these two photos, they look cold. But the photo in the car at the same time gives me a feeling of safety, and so I think these two photos just go together really well as contrasting feelings, even though they're the same subject more or less. That's why I wanted to show them to you, because I thought it's nice that in the middle of this series I might throw in some black and white photos for a change. And then here is one more black and white photo. This is at my parents' place. And I don't know if you can relate, but if you like the place where your parents live and you come back, it's always very nostalgic. And so I've found myself often wanting to capture this feeling of nostalgia when I visit my parents. And this room here, this is like the, the office room for my parents. I know, this room is just, it's so typical of my parents. I can look at it and just see so many things that are so characteristic of them. So for me, of course, the photo has quite a lot of meaning. I don't really know if it can translate to you, but I think for somebody who likes to look at pictures and find lots of little hints that you can interpret things into, this must be quite a fun photo because there's a lot of things to look at, a lot of little details. And I think the photograph really turned out nicely that you can see what's outside, in what kind of a place are we here, and you can see enough of the inside. And I really like this backlight aesthetic that we've got here. It's very soft and it just comes over all of the objects and shines a little white reflection on them to illuminate the whole scene and I think this turned out really beautifully so I wanted to show it to you. Then it is time to finally move on to some good weather sunny photos. Here are two from... yeah I don't really know when. <laughs> this was another one of those rolls that I shot over a time span of like two months or so so I have no idea when I shot these photos. Sometime in spring probably and uh, this I believe was just on some walks with Melly and in the left photo we were walking past a hill that is close to where we live and that hill was really blooming all the grass and all the other plants and flowers were really gaining some height already and were really growing steadily and the sun was currently going down as you can probably see in the light and I thought this light that came from the side but also from behind a bit really had such a beautiful glowing look in all the grass and so I just had to shoot this photo and I think it turned out wonderfully I think it's beautiful it really it captures exactly what I just described to you 
which was what was intriguing me, this glow that was in all the grass, and I think it really comes across in the photo. And on the right photo, this photo didn't quite work out the way I wanted. I remember that I really had difficulties composing this photo, because you have to know, I mean, I don't want to tell you what you're not supposed to see in this photo, but in reality, right below, if I just would have tilted a bit lower, there would have been some cars, and those cars look quite modern, and I thought that it just doesn't fit, because I thought the houses didn't look very modern. It looked old and it had this feeling of nostalgia with the moon in the background, by the way, which I absolutely love that the moon is in here, and also with this sunset aesthetic. It really has the potential to be a nostalgia evoking image, I thought. However, those cars were really a problem, so I tilted up the camera, which in return now gave me way too much sky. Half of the photo is just this blue sky, and it doesn't really look too bad. Maybe it would have been okay if that moon would have been right in the uh, left top corner, not in the corner, but like in that area, because that could fill that hole there. But at the moment, it's just a blue hole of emptiness. <laughs> so that doesn't really quite work. But I think overall, the mood definitely comes across in the photo. So this next series of photos in this big series of photos, I suppose, are all uh, from Vienna. Melly and I went on a little trip to Vienna about a month ago, I think, and these are some photos from there. We had some pretty hot and sunny days, and I had a roll of Ultramax with me in my Olympus XA3. And here are two of the photos. The left one is a very simple, straight down the road Vienna photo, I suppose. This is one of the photos that I wanted to get just to document the trip and document the vibe of Vienna. Because Vienna is very different to Salzburg, where I live, and I think this effectively captures one of the things that really intrigues me every time I am in Vienna. It is that the buildings there are so much higher, like every building on average is at least five floors or seven floors high. So when you walk through the streets here, you can just look up everywhere. I mean, for anyone who, from a big city, especially from America, this is probably the most normal thing. But here in Austria, you have to know that Austria is quite flat, except for the Alps, of course, the mountains. But speaking of buildings, Austria is quite flat, except for Vienna. And so that's always a bit intriguing when you go there. And I think this photo really captures that very nicely. I also really like how the light was captured here. The shadows and the highlights, they all look very pleasing here. It looks perfect. I'm really happy with how this turned out and how the mood is looking, the colors. I think it just captures it really effectively. And then the right photo is more of a snapshot just during that trip. We were riding the U-Bahn and I just really liked how the light was hitting that guy reading his newspaper. But I didn't want to point the camera at him, so that's why it's this strange composition where it's just his newspaper and his hands coming in just at the edge. I don't know, the composition is very random, but I kind of like that it's blurry, that I sort of shook it by mistake. I think the shutter speed must have been a bit too low, uh, but it's an automatic camera, so I didn't really have control over it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I kind of like it, but it's a bit random, and I see why some people would just not feel and understand it, but I thought it's worth showing in this series as just a piece of the series. Then let's continue with these two photos, which are again more just a documentation of Vienna as a city. So in the left photo, we were actually waiting for a friend that we were going to meet. We hadn't quite managed to find a good spot to meet, so we were looking for each other and waiting for each other as we were calling each other to ask, wait, where are you now? <laughs> and uh, so while we were waiting, I was of course thinking, uh, what should I do? Well, actually, I could take some photos. And I just looked for some compositions and I really liked this part here where you've got this open space at the bottom, but the buildings coming up um, in the background. And so I tried to capture that. I got two photos actually, one with a lot of people in the foreground, which I don't think worked that well. It's just a bit too messy. And here it's the opposite. It's like the right amount of people, but in the front, there's just this empty hole. Like that woman with the, I think it's a green t-shirt. If she would have been, if I just would have waited two or three seconds and she would have been right in front of me, that probably would have been a much better photo. So yeah, I mean, you know, street photography is not exactly my genre. I'm very lacking in practice of street photography, I suppose, and I think I just would have needed a bit more patience in this photo. Uh, then it would have worked much better, but I still think it's a very beautiful documentation of Vienna. I think the photo presents Vienna from a very beautiful side. It looks very nice, I think. 
And then the right photo I actually mainly took because of the interesting composition that I found. I really liked this subframe that I found with the yellow, I don't know what it is, it was we were at this train station and it was a roof but it looked like it was a tent at the bottom there was this wall and they together built this i don't know what you call this an eclipse kind of well like an eye maybe kind of shape and in there i found this building that i could frame as a subject and i think this worked out beautifully I think this photograph works as this exploration of compositions. It could have been a bit more minimal, I suppose, if I somehow would have managed to cut off the little messy parts at the bottom there and the bottom left. And then let me show you the last photo of today's series, this here. Quite a mood change, I suppose. It's more of this dark, artificial light street photography kind of mood but I just wanted to include it because I think it's a pretty cool photo. So this was just after the concert that we had gone to and on our way home and we passed this garage and this was just the entrance to that garage and I thought these artificial lights going into the distance really had a sense of depth. Also of course all the roads, you have all these leading lines which really add depth to the photograph and I thought it's definitely worth getting a shot and I was worried that it wouldn't work because I was shooting with the Olympus and it's automatic exposure in the dark with Ultramax 400 without a flash. I was not sure if it was going to work, but this is brilliant. I think it worked out wonderfully. I love the green tint that came out here. It looks really stylized with this green tint. And also, if you look closely, you even have these red halations, not like with Sinistil. Sinistil has those really strongly, but I think uh, Portra also tends to have those red halations sometimes around really bright objects in the photo. And I didn't know that Ultramax also had that, but seems like it has it in a very soft kind of way. You don't really see it that clearly but when you look for it you see it and I think it just adds a little nice detail to the photo and yeah I just wanted to include this because I think it, it looks great. It's a really moody dark photo and I can't really tell you what exactly it is I like about it. I think a lot of it is actually just the surprise that actually worked but I definitely wanted to include this here because I think it's overall just visually speaking a very interesting photo. It's quite intriguing I find and that is it. Yeah, that's the last photo of the recent film photographs that I wanted to show you because I like them. I'd be really curious to know which you like in particular and if there's any that you would think stand out a lot because it's always interesting for me to know what the opinions of others are and how they perceive photos and I mean, I already shared all my thoughts, I don't need to repeat myself. So with that said, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet. And I'll see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.